Hey, what's going on guys? We're back at the layout and we are going to be doing Advanced DCC Part 4B and when we were doing Part 4A we were looking at this guy here which is an Othern uh, ready to roll uh, SD40 and we had installed the Digitrax decoder into it and before we can put the sound part into it I felt it necessary to go over some uh, DCC uh, CV fundamentals. Now CVs are configuration values. Uh, some people call it changeable values. Uh, I often say CV values which is really the wrong way to say it but you guys know what I'm trying to say when I do that. So uh, I'm going to go over some basics um, and we're going to think we're going to end with this one with uh, programming uh, four digit addresses so you guys have an understanding how to do that and that will give us a platform to build as we continue with the programming of this locomotive and just like the rest of the series um, this one's not going to be different we're starting here and we're, we're working our way up so uh, let's get started okay I'm going to start off by giving you guys some examples of what CVs are and what they can do uh, this page is from the Digitrax website and I'm going to scroll down. Now these reflect on sound primarily but there's a lot more. For example CV58 uh, operates to master volume. The default volume I think on these are 9 and you can lower the volume level by adding a value lower than 9. Uh, 0 being no volume, 1 being a little bit of volume and working its way up or you can increase the volume by bringing it all the way up to value of 15. Now if you were to put a value higher than 15 such as 16 or 17 or 18 or all the way on up uh, it simply won't register or it will remain at 15 so you have to stay within the parameters of what's allowed. If I... The next thing you guys are going to need is some kind of programming track. Although you can do some programming in the main line, it's probably a lot easier to start off using a programming track. Now what this is, is a section of track that is isolated from the main line. It can be part of your layout. For example, I could use this spur as a programming track if I had a set of double insulated joiners somewhere here that's, that turned this track off from the rest of the main line or maybe even have a toggle switch somewhere down here that would say main line or program track and that would be a double pull double throw type switch where I could turn this track on and off to whatever purpose I want but in either case your program track needs to be isolated from the main line or it will not function correctly in my case I'm using a PR3 from Digitrax to do my programming. That also needs to be isolated from your command station. Isolated with the power source as well as the rails. A mistake that I made, I had put the PR3 on my main line with my command station and I started to melt my case as it heated up it was not meant to handle that kind of power that this would put out. So keep that separate, don't make the same mistake I made. Okay, I'm going to give you guys uh, just a few examples of what I've changed in my CV values on these two locomotives and how they can affect the operation. So I'm going to start by giving it a little bit of juice. Let's set a speed stop three. Nice little crawl. Now I'm going to kick it up to about all on around 30. Notice how the locomotives notch up, but the actual locomotive speed increases very gradually. This adds for a little more prototypical acceleration where the engine will fire up. It's diesel, but it'll eventually go up to speed. 
And I know the lighting in here is not so good, so I apologize about that. Once I get the second level going up here, I'll probably have some better lighting. But now I'm going to bring it back down, down to zero. And you can hear the diesels kicking back down to notch one, even before it calls down to a stop. Now you're looking at it and going, wow, that's kind of neat. Uh, a lot of typical sound projects out there, especially with Digitrax and probably a few others, uh, the engine will not notch up until the engine physically goes a little faster. And the engine will notch down until it gets slower and it won't come down to notch one until well after it comes to a stop. I was able to change the values in this uh, and do it, what I showed you as. Uh, by one, changing CV values, and two, using a combination of the Digitrax decoder like I put in in the previous video and using the soundbook so I can control CVs uh, between the two decoders independently. And I'll show that in more detail uh, a little bit later in part three. Okay, as promised, we are going to be doing an address change, and we're going to be doing the four digit address method. And that is because this locomotive has a four digit road number, 6301. So using the Digitrax DT402, if you have the 400, it's going to be the same way. Does not matter if you have the Super Chief or Super Empire Builder. And by the way, this is for Lee BCS. This is your request, so sorry it takes so long to get it for you. But you hit Program. By default, you get address 2 option, which is also CV1. If you hit this R button, oops, got to hit it hard enough, you get the four digit option. And we said this was 6301. And when you hit enter, you got to hit yes real quick to confirm it. And it is there. So I'm going to exit, and this was previously address 3 by default. As you can tell, it no longer works. Bear with me, I'm doing this one-handed. I'm going to change the locomotive to, again, 6301 locomotive, and... There we go. The address has been successfully changed. Okay guys, I know that was pretty brief. I just wanted to go over a few highlights of CVs and give you a real brief and hopefully understandable explanation of what they can do for your layout. And I hope the address change uh, was helpful. Um, Take one of your locomotives, start playing with CVs. Uh, there's listings on uh, the Digitrax website or what everything is like I showed before. And if you mess it up, uh, just hit CV08 to evaluate. That'll turn it back to manufacturer's default. So if you screw it up, uh, don't worry about it. You can bring it back to uh, 0, .0 or, again, manufacturer's default. So, uh, again, I hope this helps. And the next video, part 4C, we're going to get more involved with speed matching. And we'll probably start putting the sound bug in and start programming that as well. So see you soon.